Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel again. It's been a while, but I am back now with a tech video. And you know, the topic is always about eye racing. And to be more specific this time, uh, it's about all the different ENE files and all the settings that can be tweaked there. So that means uh, we will go under the hood of the simulator and edit some files and hopefully getting some more features and performance. Uh, if you want to skip forward in this video for a particular section, there will be timestamps to all the information in the description below, as always. Uh, this video took a long time to script, film and edit, so please help me out and give it a like and consider subscribing. Okay, the pace is going to be quite high in this one, so let's go! Every setting in the iRacing in-sim options menus are represented in different ENE files and there we got even more settings just hiding and waiting for us iRacing geeks to tweak. The reason why some of these settings are hidden is accordingly to iRacing that many of them are a bit confusing and it's difficult to implement them to the UI without making the user experience too complicated. I have collected some of them, but I am sure there are many many more handy ones out there. And many are already well known, but I hope I can introduce some new ones too. We find the different ENE files in our document and iRacing folder and we open them easily with Notepad or our app of choice. To help locate the ENE files in the folder, we can go to the view settings and then add show file name extensions. I recommend we make a backup copy of the ENE files we aim to change so we can go back with confidence that every change we did will be reverted if needed. And if we screw things up completely, we can just delete the ENE files too and iRacing will make a new default one when a new session is finished. As iRacing constantly updating the simulator, there will of course be changes to the different ENE files and some information will vanish, be renamed or move, so don't panic if your settings will vary from the ones shown in this video. First we got the two up ENE and core ENE files and then potentially five render DX11 ENE files that represent the different sim display modes that we can choose to use. Monitor Oculus, OpenVR, OpenXR or the original Renderer DX11. As an example, if we use a monitor and start a test, practice or a race session from the UI, the Renderer DX11 monitor ENE file will be used. If we use VR, the three different display modes have its own ENE file and we must make sure we make changes in the right file that we use and also not have the simulator running as our saved changes otherwise not will be applied. We also got the camera ENE file but that is just a straight copy of the in-sim camera setting and there is no extra information that can be tweaked there. We can't do any relevant with the fuel data ENE file as well. Okay, enough talk about different files, let's move on and zoom in a bit and begin. Let's start with enable hidden load mode. If we feel like it, we can choose to disable the fancy iRacing UI loading screen and utilize the simulator's original classic loading screen instead by changing the setting here. Virtual mirror size. Here we can adjust the size of the virtual mirror. The default value is medium and we got the ability to have the mirror in large, small, extra small and even extra extra small. Force crowd visible. During test sessions the crowds are always off and during practice and qualifying sessions the crowd are reduced to run 50% by default. When changing the value here folks will run to the grandstands and fill up the seats regardless of event type. Auto reset fast repair. By default we automatically request fast repair servers once our vehicle exits pit road. If we don't want that and instead take full control over this feature and instead save it and use it when really necessary, we can disable this by changing the values accordingly. Auto reset pit box. Same thing here. By default, iRacing automatically requests full pit service once our vehicle exit pit road. If you don't want that and instead take full control over both our fuel and tire strategy, we can disable this. Custom test session stall location. 
When we are in a test session, we can, by changing the values here, start and use a pit stall other than the first, which is default. The numbers we choose will give us that corresponding position on pit road. If we, as an example, choose to have a pit stall further back, and want to practice pit road speed on different tracks without the need of doing a lap first, this could perhaps be somewhat useful. Show join leave. If we don't want to see the messages when drivers join or leave a session, we can disable them by doing changes. A few years back these messages caused stutters, especially when cars were added to the sim, but nowadays it seems solved. Show incident messages while driving. It can be a smart thing to let iRacing show inset messages while driving by default, but if we don't want to be bothered, we can get rid of that information here. Pause replay on exit. When exiting our car, iRacing will by default play the replay instantly, but if we don't want that, we can disable this behavior and instead have a moment of peace and quiet and start the replay when we want. Enable ticker. Here we can enable a race ticker showing lap, driver name, numbers and standings in a replay session going across on top of the screen. You will need to turn off the session UI by pressing spacebar to enable it too. Replay patch remote cars. This setting is enabled by default and is a bit complicated, but this makes the simulator to update the replay with all the cars positions from the server. That means that when we watch a replay, it will show us when the server thinks all the cars are positioned, which will have error due to latency. When disabling this, we are seeing what actually happened on each driver's computer and how each player actually was driving, and it could help us better understand netcode incidents. Could be useful for broadcasters as it minimizes cars with bad connections warping around on the track and also when examining closely another driver's line and braking points. Ask to save on quit. If we always want to be asked to save the replay before quitting a session, we can enable it. Just set it and forget it and never be worried to forget saving a replay ever again. You while scale percentage. We got the ability to change the size of the iRacing session UI from the in-sim options menu. This affects the in-core UI too and iRacing give us some values to choose from as 50, 66, 80, 100% and above and that is good but we can adjust this setting even further. There is a rather big gap between the different options and we can choose whatever number we like. I got mine set to 90% and oddly it says 50% in the options menu afterwards, but we can just ignore that. Session UI transparency. By increasing or decreasing the values here, we can choose the amount of transparency being applied to our session UI. Drive UI transparency. Same story here, but on our in-car UI elements. By increasing or decreasing the values here, we can choose the amount of transparency being applied. For us graphic junkies, this could be useful when using a third-party racing overlay such as RaceLab and to be able to exactly match the transparency of the black boxes with the overlay. Force visible when move. Pressing Alt and K give us the ability to change the in-core UI elements. By enabling this setting, we can force all movable control, not just a few such as radio, delta flags, virtual mirror, etc. to become visible. Show radio controls. Doing changes here will either display the radio channel control while driving or not. Car low high padding. With this parameter we can define the distance from which we will be warned by the spotter that there is a car next to us. It measures how much clearance front and back in meters to give a car before reporting it as clear. The default value is 25 cm or 10 inches, and the larger we make this, the safer our passes will be. But we will hear the spotter calling inside more often as well. Car low high at start. As default, the spotter car low high calls are disabled for a short duration after the green flag is in the air. But when enabling this setting, the calls will be heard immediately as soon as we get the green. Ghost card transparency. In iRacing we can choose to display the reference card during a lonely test session. 
This is a feature that can help us with our training as it shows our last lap as a ghost car on the track. In this setting we can choose the amount of transparency being applied to the ghost car. We can in fact make it completely visible like our own car. Ghost car offset sec. If we also want to chase our ghost car rather than it always take our exact position from the last lap, we can give it a lead by adjusting the prefix number and perhaps make the training a bit more fun and realistic. Fade ghost car when close. This setting is enabled by default and makes the ghost car always transparent when we drive near it. I understand the purpose of it, but if you dialed in the previous settings, we should disable this and have the ghost car non-transparent as it otherwise will pop in and out all the time when we are near. Cockpit look angle In this setting we can't expand our cockpit look angle more than 65 degrees. Instead we can reduce it and sim races with one monitor and a limited field of view can find this setting interesting. Cockpit look instant here we can control how quickly our head turns when looking to the sides and also up and down. By default that transition is very sharp and digital and by changing the value here we can have a smoother, much more realistic movement. Cockpit look down angle. As we can control our head movement looking horizontally we can also do it vertically. We got the possibility to adjust the angle in degrees to tilt our head when looking down. If you just want to see our gauges when looking down and not our pants, we can reduce this setting but also the opposite and increase it. The use here is much dependent on what car we drive and our field of view in use. Driver head wobble iRacing makes our head wobble a little bit when going over bumps and it's trying to simulate how our head naturally would behave when that happens. By reducing the numbers we can have a more static behavior and VR users can find this setting useful to prevent motion sickness. Driver Rotate Head This could help us know more clearly when the car is at the point of breaking loose and spinning out as we can see the car rotate out from under us instantly. If we don't exaggerate the values this could be a thing to try especially in different road cars. Driver Head No Pitch Pitching means that our car is shifting weight either front to back or back to front and this controls how our head stays level with the horizon when that happens. This could be useful for people with motion platforms. Driver head horizon. When our car is leaning to one side this controls how our head stays level with the horizon. It enables a roll effect that helps us to visually observe the amount of leaning our car is experiencing as the track changes from flat to banked or when we go over curbs. This feature makes a big difference on oval tracks, especially the high banked ones. It can give us a more realistic behavior and immersion if we don't go all crazy with the numbers. Compressed texture suits, compressed texture helmets, compressed texture cars. If we want to enhance how car paint, suits and helmets looks like, we can choose to force eye racing to use uncompressed textures instead of compressed textures. It does not do wonders, but helps to clean up the paints a bit at least. These settings does not affect our frame rate, it just makes the sim consumes much more video memory according to eye racing, Up to around 1 GB in a 64 car race. But as custom paints often got more layers, we can easily double that, so keep a close eyes on this one, but it's a good one. Load textures when driving. Here we can choose how the simulator load the textures just mentioned. Load them when we are out of the car, in pit lane just sitting in a garage or replay screen, or loading the textures when we are driving. Changing this will minimize the risk of car paints popping in and out during a race. Dynamic shadow res. This setting controls the resolution generated by the dynamic object setting. Lowering the numbers a notch will help if you want extra performance but with really scary jagged shadow as a result. Increasing the numbers will definitely give us less frame rate but delivers very nice sharp shadows. FXAA quality edge threshold, FXAA quality sub picks. We can fine tune the post process anti aliasing method FXAA and try to make it preferably less blurry and save some level of details. If we lower the value FXAA quality edge threshold that controls the minimum amount of local contrast required to apply the algorithm we theoretically get a smoother image. 
FXAA quality subpixels control the amount of subpixel aliasing removal. Higher value makes the image softer and blurrier. We should not expect too much visual differences, but if we seek some performance gains, this could at least be worth a try. Sharpening clamp. Sharpening amount. Sharpening helps the anti-aliasing and enhances the edges and reduces blurriness and this drastically improves clarity. We can change the sharpening amount to a lower or a higher number that decrease or increase the sharpening effect. We can also fine tune it even more by changing the sharpening clamp to a higher number that to my understanding adjusts the maximum percentage that each pixel can change. U2 compression is unfortunately washing out the fine details between the settings but the differences are quite noticeable. Max pit objects to draw in mirrors. Max pit objects to draw. Max cars to draw in mirrors. Max cars to draw. We can adjust how many cars will be shown in our main cockpit view camera and in the mirrors. Draw pits does exactly the same thing but is only controlling the amount of render cars being visible in the pit area. iRacing provides us with a few predetermined numbers and we can adjust these settings even more by dialing in our own numbers. By doing so we can gain some performance and the value will be changed to customize in our in-sim graphic options menu. Max working set megabyte 64 bit, video memory megabyte. We can adjust both these more accurate by entering in the exact values we want as the slider in the in-sim options menu works but is a bit fiddly. We can't exceed any limits though. Windowed X-Pus, Windowed Width, Windowed Height. We can use iRacing with the 3 screen monitor setup without the need of activating Nvidia Surround by adding our vertical resolution on our monitor in the window height and our horizontal resolution times 3 in the window width and making sure that the window x push is offset by the horizontal resolution of our monitor meaning a negative value and then we are basically set session ui full screen here we have the ability to change so the iRacing session ui expands from the center monitor to both side monitors when using a triple monitor setup. Drive UI full screen. Also, if we use a triple monitor setup, we must activate this setting if we want to move our in-car UI elements from the center monitor to the side monitors. Dynamic track texture update rate. To manually control the maximum frequency of the setting dynamic track and its texture updates, we can change some numbers either decrease or increase it and if the latter watch out for high CPU usage. To really see the changes such as increased rubber build up on the track we need to my understanding have shadow maps and dynamic objects also enabled. NUM processor to use for new damage. This setting can improve the performance of the new damage model especially when using a multi-core CPU and under heavy loads during large wrecks and when multiple cars have severe damage. By default the simulator will utilize half of the available logical processors on our CPU and that means two cores and two threads on a quad core system with hyper threading and we can change that if needed and raise that to a value that is optimized for our PC specs. Two stage AA. This is located in the VR E&E files department and the display mode in use and is enabled by iRacing. This run anti-aliasing on the UI elements and if we want to save some performance we can disable this option by changing the prefix value. Visibility frame delay. When changing this we could according to iRacing eliminate some stutters and gaining some frame rate especially when cornering at large road courses. Monochrome headlights. Here we can enable monochrome headlights and this will make all car headlights to render as white lights providing a bit less banding and saving some performance. IR SDK Auto Log Disk. Lastly, if we want our log telemetry to automatically start when we enter our car, we can enable this and be happy to find the files in the documents iRacing telemetry folder. This will though fill up our hard drive so we must make sure we have lots of room as telemetry data can eat a few hundred megabytes per hour. Alright that's it, time to end this video. I wish you all a very very good luck tweaking your own favorite e, &E file and hopefully making this great sim even better. Again please give this video a like if you like this kind of content and also consider subscribing. 
Thanks for watching and take care.